It's the Prep Rally Podcast, the only podcast in the state dedicated to prep sports. Brought to you by the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Here's your host, Chip Souza. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ricky, we are live, live, all the way live. We're going to be dropping knowledge, and that ain't no jive. You mean after this show? That's during the show, hopefully. Oh, uh, we're, oh, we're going to be. Okay. Yeah, all right. yeah. Let's go. I'm ready then. Yeah. Drop some on me. Yeah. So I don't I'm, know anything. I'm Chip Souza, joined by Henry Apple to my left, Rick Fires to my right. We are the sports reporters for the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and we are here today, Prep Rally, the podcast, and we're going to be bringing it all day long. Well, good luck. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with softball. 6A West softball, Henry, I got a chance to see a really good game yesterday, 2-1 to one game. Ricky, about an hour and 15 minutes this game. Oh, my goodness. I love those. Hour 15 minutes, and Rodgers earned the 2-1 to one win against Bentonville. Henry got a little bit of, little bit of revenge, uh, a little bit of, little bit of revenge there. Bentonville had laid the smack on them a couple of days before in the championship game of the River City Rumble down in Van Buren. This time it was Rodgers, 2-1. to one. Bentonville made two errors on the same play. Rogers scored the only two runs they needed on that play and uh, hung on for a win. And for a uh, senior pitcher, Madison Heinley, she said, quote, I've been waiting my whole life to beat Bentonville. <laughs> and finally she got to cross that off the bucket list. Yeah, it's amazing how things can just change in the matter of a couple of days. Yep. They go to Van Buren and Bentonville, who – Henry, 20, early, early in that season, 20, 24. 25. 25. <laughs> Right. 25 home runs, Rick. 25. 10 in one in a, game. In a tournament. 25 home runs. Out of 25 games? Out of six games, I wow. believe. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that, that, that's power to the people right Rick, there. Rick, 25 home runs. That's 25 times that ball went over the fence. How far away is the fence? It didn't matter. They hit it over yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> What was the exit velocity on those? Exit velo, yeah. I'm like, I'm like the, uh, you know, according to Jeff Fry, it don't matter. Don't, don't matter. <laughs> they got up, they got out. They got, she yeah. gone. Right? She gone. Yeah. All right. The good news for Rogers is, hey, they're now in the lead in the six A West. They are conference. They are uh, one game ahead of Bentonville uh, and bat, West, who yeah. are tied. Bentonville and West are tied. Bentonville and West are tied. Yeah. The bad news is. There's a rematch in the there's, horizon. There's a rematch coming, and possibly two because you know they may have to play a conference tournament. So that's right, that's right. So in this game, uh, Henry, in, the, in that inning, it was the bottom of the first. Um, Rogers had gotten a, got a leadoff double, and uh, Henley got then then the that was by Emma Kate Jackson leadoff batter. Second batter came up, couldn't get a bunt down, could not get a bunt down to move the runner to third. So uh, Hindley comes up. Lays a bunt down to move the runner to third. The ball, shortstop throws it a mile over the first baseman's head. Jackson comes in to score. Henley had gone to second on the bad throw. Okay, She's at second. The throw back to the infield gets past the third baseman all the way down the left field line. Henley circles the base, bases. Ricky, like a little league home run. That's a little league home run. That's what I called it in my story. It's like a little league home run. Exactly. Circles the bases. 2-0, and that's all, uh, that's all she needed. She struck out 11 batters and, and uh, walked only one, pitched a heck of a game. And that's Both you, pitchers. Yeah. Both pitchers. Uh, uh, you know, Mackenzie uh, Vaughn, oh, my goodness. Or is it right? Mackenzie yeah, Vaughn. Yeah, Mackenzie Vaughn. Boy, just uh, – she was also on her game. She gave up four hits, and uh, both of them just incredible pitchers. And you're right, they will meet again in Bentonville here in about uh, about four weeks. Yeah, so – yeah, there'll be plenty of time to stage some revenge or yes. something like that. Or, in the case of Rogers, hey, what can we do to build on this one yep. and take it to the next meeting? We talked about that a little bit uh, before the show started, Rick, about how teams uh, you know, focus, get that one win, finally you beat a rival for the first time, and you kind of have a letdown the rest of the way. And so that's something I talked to Coach Harper with a little bit about the game. And, of course, he, he's been – he's coached a year or two. You know, he okay. he, he yeah. kind of oh, knows yeah. what yeah, he's doing. Okay. Um, and, you know, and he uh, – uh, you know, he, he said, yeah, that's something that we will have to just continue to stay hungry. You know, you hear co- players say that they were more hungry than us, so you have to stay hungry if you want to, uh, you know, continue that on. So You know what? Uh, I've been around for a while, and I remember back in the 80s, uh, girls played slow pitch, and there was, I, I didn't even want to take a score on a 17-14 game. It's kind of ridiculous, you know. Uh, as I got older, we played, you know, softball just for, you know, the beer keg on second base and all that. But, man, ain't it fun to go out there and watch these kids compete? It is. Fast pitch when back then they said, you know, like six-on-six six basketball. 
oh, they can't get up and down and, and, and play like they, the boys do. They can. They've proven it over and over. Uh, softball is one of my favorite, girls softball, one of my favorite sports. Right behind it, you know, I, I like the volleyball game now when they change the rules on that. So, man, you give me a two-to-one game, an hour and a half like loved that, it. love it. Loved it, loved it. So that's what's happening in softball. So in the 6A West, they have not quite reached the halfway point. They'll reach that next week. But Rogers is atop the conference standings at 5-0. and Then you got Bentonville, Bentonville West at 4-1. and And uh, then there's a little drop after that. So it uh, should be a good race between those three the top three teams uh, for sure. And, you know, Henry Southside's also capable of, uh, of, of winning games. They, they've been close um, in some games against the top teams in the conference, so yeah. don't, don't count them out either. Yeah, and especially if, 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 just like the other sports, if we have this conference tournament, things could just change they can. In, in that week. They can. How so, far along are we in conference play? For softball, we're five games in. Uh, baseball's farther along because they play yeah. during spring break week, so yeah. they're they're farther along, which is a, a lead into taking it over to Henry, who's our baseball guru over here. Henry, you almost saw a no hitter again on Monday over at Rogers with Jackson Wells. Yeah, he has pitched so well. Uh, last week against Fayetteville, he went six innings no hit, and then all of a sudden. Fayetteville leadoff batter gets a triple into the left field corner and scores on a pass ball, and that's all Fayetteville needed. Against West, wow. he got a little bit of offensive help, and he settled in. Went five and two thirds, five and two thirds innings of no hit ball until nope, nope. Uh, the hit he finally gave up. Hey, there was no question about it. One of those, uh, what Tony Gwynn used to say, the five and a half hole. Five and a half hole. There right, you right go. Right between right short between stop short and third. And, yep. Yep. So yep. yep. Uh, it went right through there, scored a run, but still, Rogers was able to get the win there, 6-1. to one. And going this week, you know, this I thought could be a week we were going to see some separation. Yeah. We got diddly squat. But not, only did, <laughs> not only did we not get separation, we got come back to the pack is what yeah, we got. It's, uh, it's a case where, yeah, everybody split except, well, as we're doing this. Now, Fayetteville and Southside is supposed to play their, their second game of their series today. Right. But – I mean, you've got Rogers and Harbor right there at eight and two in the eight conference play. Yep. Everybody else is within one game of each other. So is that what you know they would call it a log jam? A log jam. Log jam. Yeah, absolutely a log jam. So Harbor on Monday beat Springdale. Springdale returned the favor on them Tuesday. Both games were at Arvest Ballpark. Henry, you covered Tuesday's game. And uh, great job by Springdale and, and Michael Milam. He's their first-year coach over there. Um, I know they have they have been to Harbor like Rogers has been to Bentonville in softball. You know, Springdale's not been able to beat Harbor, but what a big win for that program yesterday. It was a big win for them. And in one of those cases where it, they needed the win to get back in that log yeah. jam. And sure enough, all it took, like, just like your game with Rogers and Bentonville softball, that's the way it happened with – uh, Springdale and Harbor, an errant throw allowed two runs to score, and suddenly a two to one lead became a four to one lead. There you go. Because Harbor scores twice in the seventh inning, had the tying run at third, the winning run on second, but the relief pitcher came in and uh, threw three straight strikes and to end the game and. Let's so what, you, what you're thinking there, Henry, is, oh, no, Charlie Brown, she's going to pull that football again. <laughs> <laughs> but Springdale held on, and, and again, a great win, a, a program that's trying to, uh, you know, they're trying to get a program built back over there at Springdale. They, they've had a, a, had, had a little, little, down, little, little bit of down. Of course, last year doesn't count. We tossed that out. But uh, beautiful new facility. We thought, Henry, we, according to the schedule, that game was supposed to have been played at Springdale's facility, right. but instead it was played at at, uh, Ar- at Arvest Ballpark again. But uh, uh, but kudos and props to Springdale, and uh, maybe they use that game as a springboard. Yeah, you never. And like I said, we got this long. Rogers wins Monday, turn around, they go to West and lose and Monday. Lose on, so lose on the, Tuesday. Yep. Uh, yep. Bentonville wins on Monday at Heritage, then goes to its home field. And loses big to Heritage eight to one. Is there a more improved team in the conference than Rogers Heritage? There's not. Is there? No. They're, they they, they are vastly improved. They can 
dogfight with anybody in this group. They are vastly improved, and uh, what a great job Brian Walker has done over there, um, getting them uh, back to where to where Heritage is accustomed. Ha- Heritage has a his history of being a very good program under Keith Kilgore, and um, and so Brian Walker's got them headed back in the right way. You know, Henry, I don't know how the six A West is going to stack up with the six A Central. I don't. I, you know, we know Bryant's always very good. They're undefeated this year, but. At least to my eyes, I think the 6A West from top to bottom is is way better than it has been. It has it's it's so much more balanced. Yes, you know, teams can't look at a a Springdale and say, "Hey, that's an easy double header sweep." Uh uh-uh. uh. No, Harbor just found that out. Right. West has found it out. They had the split. Yeah. Uh, this this is what's going to make that conference tournament so interesting. I think so, too. Uh, when it comes up in the last week of April. I think so, too. And I don't know if it's competitive top to bottom because the teams are not great or if it's competitive top to bottom because the teams are improved. But whatever it is, in my in my eyes, I see the West as being a better conference top to bottom than it has been in a while is what, is what I see. So I'm seeing, Ricky, the glass is half full and not half empty. Well, that, you know what? I haven't really seen you know, like a statewide poll, or I, I don't know who does the coaches do some kind of poll or something. Because you know, I just know the hotbeds. I know uh, Pine Bluff used to be good in baseball. Texarkana, uh, Batesville, Bryant, Bryant. Yeah, the best. I mean, yeah. even the little their little league teams yeah. go like the World Series almost every other year. So I, I'd like to see more teams statewide. You know, tell to you get what, engage on that. Tell you what, Ricky. What I like. Is here it is April the sixth or whatever was the seventh April seventh and uh, we've gotten to go out and enjoy great spring weather so far. Yes, we have been outside watching kids play baseball after last year not getting to see any of that, yep. and I mean I could not I'm I'm ecstatic about it. I, I you know this this is the way it should be and uh, all is right in the world with me. It is with me as well as we transition to uh, soccer. I'm looking forward to a match tonight between uh, Bentonville and Springdale. Battle Boys. of undefeateds yeah, in the conference, I, yeah, on, in the may conference. have a tie. Seems like they've got a lot of ties this year because of the rule change that you can't go play an extra period and do the penalty kicks and all that. I think at one point uh, the Bentonville Boys, I have to check on them, but they were like 3-0 oh, and three or two, something like that. But we'll know more about that tonight. Um, I think I was talking about the other day, uh, uh, or uh, what, about 20 minutes ago, about the, I, I want lower scores for softball instead of those 17, 18. I got to have some more goals. <laughs> and, and so I covered a game. I'm, last, I'm struggling to put something together for a newspaper when it's uh, uh, going nil-nil. Yeah, there in, you go. the final five minutes of the game. There you uh, go. All I know is I got my byline on there, and I've yeah. got nothing else. <laughs> uh, but I had a one nothing game, uh, really a good game between Bentonville uh, girls. Uh, the little freshman, Hurley, scored the goal and uh, uh, to beat Rogers. Rogers got an outstanding program as well. They do. And girls up there. Won a few but state championships. They've won a few state championships. But, man, my girls, give me a 4 nothing game. Give me a 4-2 game. <laughs> These one nothing games are – Five I mean, of course, yeah. I, I don't understand yet. I'm still learning the intricacies of the game. You know, a long time soccer observer says there's the beauty in that. I haven't seen the beauty yet, but I'm 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 willing to learn. Well, I bet you see a good one tonight, Bentonville and Springdale. I, I think you'll see a good one over at Gerald Williams Bulldog Stadium. Um, and so on soccer action, of course, Bentonville girls they are the they they're the measuring stick for girls soccer. Yep. Um, them and Rogers both very very good teams. Bentonville. Came out of that one 1-0 one, to remain undefeated one, in conference play, so good for them. The boys' side, Springdale has been the measuring stick for boys in the state. Um, they are good again. They're always going to be good at Springdale. Yeah, they won it uh, in 2019. Yes. They won state championship. And were probably going to repeat last year yes. when uh, when the, the season yeah. got yanked out from under them. So, um, anyway, good boys' soccer, good girls' soccer, yeah. and uh, – I'll tell you one, you know, Rick is saying here he wants to see more goals. Yep. Yes. You need to head to Harrison. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'm Saturday gonna, afternoon, yeah. uh, Harrison played Shiloh Christian in a 4A West Conference game. A little girl by the name of Claire Barger yep. scored six times. I believe that's two hat tricks. Uh, uh, three, three is a hat trick. Three is a hat trick? Six like, would like be. Like in hockey? Yeah. Yeah. Six okay. would be. 
Twice that. I yeah. think. I'm not a math major, yeah. but I think six is twice as many as three. She scored six out of, out of how many goals? Did it? Out of seven. Seven. Wow. I hey, if I recall, no, it was nine. Somebody kind of get on it. So, yeah. yeah. And oh, that, wow. according to the AAA record book, is a record. A, a record for goals in a game. In a game. In a game. The previous record was five by a girl from Stuttgart, and she scored six. Wow. Well, that is fantastic. Okay, well, good. I mean, yeah, I mean. And, and what makes it so much fun, this girl has just came out away from Harrison's state from basketball. championship basketball there team you go. and quit, there went you go. straight to soccer, and here she goes. And she's I, I've, co- I've uh, connected with their coach. I'm going to do a little piece on that for, you know, for our notebook. Good, good, so, good. Yeah. So that's what we got going on in the spring or nothing. It's, it's just a quiet time. It's not busy at all. You know, you got, you got baseball, <laughs> softball, boys soccer, girls soccer, boys track, girls track. And a sport that I've been getting sent to me, spring, uh, Bentonville has a championship-level lacrosse team um, over there. And so I've been getting that, that in the roundup. Thank, thank you to Steve Dittmore for sending that to me. Uh, Bentonville boys lacrosse is 10-1 uh, and one on the year and 6-0 and oh in their league. I mean, how many? They play. There's a couple of teams. Little Rock has some teams. There's a team out of Springdale with, connected to the Don Tyson School over there. Okay. And then Bentonville also plays over in Oklahoma in, the, in an Oklahoma league uh, against Jinx and, and Tulsa Union and, and, and uh, programs like that. So uh, they're playing a, you know, quite a number of games. And uh, I don't know the first thing about lacrosse except they run around the field with little sticks with a net on the end, and that's about all I know about it. Hey, I know a little, little yeah. bit about just a hair more. I mean, it derives from an old uh, – the Native Americans used to play a game like that. And it's real popular over in the Northeast. And during the summer or spring, I remember flipping channels, watching. And I said, "Man, these kids are—they're like—they're good athletes. They're yes. six two, six three. Yeah. They got the little helmet on. They got the net. And you know, it's not like uh, Henry going out there trying to catch bees and everything. You got to pr- be precise about it yeah. to get that ball to go on the right angle. And if you're the goalie there, I don't know how hard that uh, ball is coming at you. But that—I'm uh, glad. I'm, I'm yeah. glad to see that sport getting Me too. here. Yeah. It, it, it's sort of like, and I've sit there and watched it, and I would say, well, you've got the. You're outdoors, so it's sort of like soccer because they yep. move up and down the field yep. like soccer. Okay, they've got sticks and they've got nets, so it looks a little bit like hockey. But then I'll sit there and watch them and say, wait a minute. I can also see some basketball in here because oh, yeah. I see a man-to-man defense. Yep. I see a zone-type defense. Uh, so it, it, there's a lot of mixture in that. Yeah, you, know you know, I saw some roller derby in there. So I, so I saw one guy go up the other one and go, boom. I love that. Right, right across the uh, neck right there. I said, so roller derby too. So it looks like a fun game. And, and stamina, I mean, just like soccer, the thing you admire about these kids, they don't take a break, sit, sit over there and eat a mayonnaise sandwich for 20 minutes. They go and go and, of course, they get a halftime. But uh, I like that game right there where they go and go and go and don't. Messing Rick, around. that would be like the Ted Mad Stork Hendricks uh, clothesline he threw on, on one clo- of the players. Oh, I the remember line. the Stork, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. So, uh, lacrosse uh, is uh, – uh, Rick, if you don't know if you know this, you probably do. Jim Brown, one of the greatest running backs absolutely. of all time, was a All-American lacrosse player at Syracuse. So, And he said, well, what, is it, uh, yeah, what are you going to do this uh, fall? I don't know. What's that, football? Yeah, I'll try let, that. let me try that football yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. He's so, uh, so, so, congratulations to that. Uh, Bentonville, Fayetteville has a team as well. Um, and so, gr- that's uh, – hey, whatever gets kids involved, get them, get them the involved. Couch. Yeah, get them off the couch and let's, let's get play some ball. Get cell phone out of their hand. Yes, let's play some, some lacrosse and whatever it is you got going. I'm still hoping at some point that high school hockey will continue to grow in this area because we ha- you know, have the rink at the Jones Center. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, we've had some really good teams in the past and uh, would like to – you know, ho- hopefully we'll see that continue to grow as well. Man, I love hockey. I mean, I, I, I lived for years up in Michigan, and uh, I used to go. They had an amateur team just outside of uh, Grand Rapids, a uh, um, farm club of Detroit Red Wings. And this is like in the early 70s, and the goalie did not have a mask. And, I mean, he, he had t- like or two or three. He, <laughs> he had lumps on him like one of them cartoons where one of the cartoon characters would get beat up. But that's a man's game. I mean, that's a I'm tough game. You. I'm yeah. telling you. And so, Henry, we'll also kick it over to you. We've got track going on. We are a couple of meets into the season. I know Fayetteville Bulldog Relay was held last weekend. Bentonville Boys and Girls won the team titles there. The girls won pretty handily, yeah. uh, 220-something points, I believe. Yeah. The boys side, more of a log jam, kind of a log yeah, jam. Yeah, 
it was here was the thing. I started looking at the scores and started comparing it. Uh, Bentonville won by five points yeah. over Bentonville West, and Fayetteville was a little bit farther behind. But going into the four by four hundred relay, which is the last meet, you know, the last event of the meet, love it. Yes. It was a one-point match. Ooh, uh, you know, I love that. And you're saying, hey, now that it's four-by-four four yes. means something. Yes. Yeah, let, let's get out there and get it done. Yes. And sure enough, Bentonville wanted to get a little bit of cushion in there. But uh, three things I want to bring out from the Bulldog relays as, as I sit there. Number one, where is Isaiah Satanga? Yes. the Probably the premier high school track athlete in this state. He's not there. He's not running. And – I don't have an answer for it. Is he gone, you know, full football or because well, he's already – I know this, Henry. I got a text message from a friend of mine who writes for uh, texags.com. You know, he is committed, verbally committed to Texas A&M. He, this friend of mine sent me a message and said that he was going to be coming up here from College Station to cover Satanga in the 6A state track meet. So – if he's not running track, it's, it would be news to them for sure. Yeah. Uh, two other things I'm going to bring up, and both of them have to deal with the high jump. Now, we talked about this last week, and right. you said the standard was, you know, uh, to be elite, six foot for girls, right. seven foot for boys. Right. Well, Sam Hurley of Fayetteville on his home course cleared 6'10 Ooh, that's Friday. Rick, have you Six ever ten? Rick, Six ten. Rick, one of the coolest things ever, I don't know if you've ever done this or not, but it's really cool to stand close to the high jump pit to see someone go that high. I it's, did. It's, I, remember I told you all the, last week, one of the greatest events I ever seen when I was covering track meet over at Blyville and Blyville, Mariana, and some of them teams, though, I watched three kids hit seven foot. Wow, Is that's that right? seven foot. Uh, that's a, that's incredible to yeah. see it up close. So that was it on the girls' side. Sydney Billington of Bentonville clears five foot ten. So oh, she's getting close to that now, six foot. Ooh, that, yeah. That matches the state overall record. Okay. Now, again, we have this rule here that uh, state records can't be set during an invitational meet, only during state meet, state meet, but in the meet of champs. But she's there, and she's got a month to go until the state meets. So this could get really interesting. Now, we have to go back to the 2020 uh, state indoor meet, which was held before coronavirus hit. The state record at the high jump at that time was 5'7". Indoors. In, on indoors. She broke it three times in the same day. Same, went 5'8", 5'9", 5'10". There you go. And what so, grade is she in? She's now senior. senior. She has already signed uh, early. She's going to Arkansas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. So, uh, Lance Harder has got himself a jewel there. Well, I, I had the really good fortune of, of starting my career in Texas, uh, going getting to go to the Texas State Track and Field Meet down in Austin a few times. Um, uh, Rick, I started in 1984. I started full-time in 1984. When I was in fourth grade. Yes. Uh, my first state meet that I covered, I went down to Austin, and I saw the national, boys' national 200-meter record broken three times that weekend. The last it's by – athletes. One, the last was by – and all three of them were Olympian, became Olympians. Okay, wow. Yeah, the last one that I saw was Roy Martin, Roy Robot Martin, who ran, a, I believe, a tw it's either 20 flat or 20.1. One or the other, it's, it's, it was 1984, or 80, yeah, 84, 85, 1985. That record still stands. That is still wow. the standard for the two boys 200. Wow, that is something. Uh, a year or so later, went back down again and got to see Amy Acuff high jump. She also an Olympic, Olympic champion, clear six foot. And the first time I ever saw a girl go six foot, and it was incredible to be down right by the pit to see that happen. Um, so I love track and field. I'm, I'm not, I, and I'm not Henry as far as my knowledge of track and field, but I love it. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's track except for the relays is you against your competitors, you know, one, one on, you know, whatever. And, uh, there's that, you know, seeing that, seeing that bring out the best in kids is, is something else. Hey, well, you know, Texas got some athletes. I imagine that was some, like it was. you said, that's some stick in your mind even there. Uh, I've tried to cover, I'm glad Henry does it, 
uh, tried to cover because you got you know a race going on over here and somebody in the pit over yep. here doing high jump. It's multitasking for sure. Hat, and I'm uh, got my head on a swivel and you know I'm I, I'm all confused. I just go to a car and take a yeah. nap or something. But so, it's, it can be hectic, can it, Henry? It, it can be hectic, but that's what I love so much about track. There is so much variety there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I have people come and tell me, he says, all they do is run around the track. I said. No, you no. haven't sit there and watched no. a 3,200-meter race, which normally people run to the bathroom or yeah, the concession stand. Yeah, go get that time. Yeah. You haven't watched the mental aspect of it. Watch the mind games as these people run and say, hey, when, kick uh, yep. when am I going to kick? When am I going to hold off What's and all that? Pace? You yeah. know, or uh, which one of these is going to be the rabbit? You yeah. know? Uh, I remember, uh, as Chip told his story, here's mine. Uh, when I fir- finally decided I was really going to get devoted into track and field, this is while I was in Hot Springs. I had a meet at Jesseville and went up to Jesseville for the meet. I wanted to see this high jumper people were talking about. Uh, the, he had the record. He set it the year before in the high jump was seven foot one. Mm. Incredible. That, that wow. day, he cleared seven one and three quarters, oh. broke his own record, and did it. So I went to go talk to the coach about it with his uh, about his feet, and he says, "Yeah, guess what? He did it in borrowed shoes. <laughs> he had left his shoes at home and had to borrow another pair of sh- shoes just to do that." Oh, by the way, the guy's name was Kenny Evans, an All-American high jumper at Arkansas. There you go. There hey, you another go. one I can't remember. I, I was talking to a veteran sports writer, uh, maybe Bob Wisner down at High Springs. Man, you've seen a lot of everything. What sticks out in your mind? And he talked about a track meet years ago. A guy came, got off the bus. He was in his running sh- uh, shoes, uh, got on the track, turned in, uh, put his track shoes on, did a little warm-up, went down there and set about three records. His name was Bashil Shabazz. I've heard that name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> could, it, thinks about him in football, and he was a great football player. And, uh, but he was an outstanding track athlete. And that's when you see his athleticism where these guys get on the track and you know, throw the shot foot, whatever. Yeah, well, if- yeah. Bazil Shabazz could run with the football. He could run, but I did see his kryptonite. What's that? Uh, when he played baseball, giving him a curveball. <laughs> yeah. Bats well, afraid. You know what? Yeah. There's a third best sport. Yeah. He, he wanted to come to Arkansas, but he didn't have the grades. He couldn't, couldn't get in. Track and field was his second or maybe his best. Um, he just signed out of athleticism. St. Louis Cardinals signed him. And I think he got up to double A. I mean, of course, he hit about 116. Yeah. But he did play a little pro ball. Wow. So, you know, we'll wrap up today's show by saying spring sports, there's pl- they're plentiful out there. You can get out on a warm afternoon like we've been doing. You can see some great softball going on. Uh, you know, you got great baseball going on. We've got trap meets. Henry, this week we've got the Whitey Smith Carnival, Relay Carnival over at Rogers Heritage on Thursday. We also have the Blackhawk Relays at, at P. Ridge, Ridge on Thursday, uh, which leads to, hey, Sunday, I've got a feature story coming on P. Ridge's Blakely Win. Blakely Win. All they do is win, win, win. Yeah, that there name sounds familiar. Yeah. Uh, she, little sister. No, of the cousin. 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 Okay. Yep. Yeah. So you got that going on. Friday down at Greenwood will be the Bulldog Relays down there at Greenwood. So lots of good track going on. Uh, soccer. Rick seems like it's every night of the week. Got soccer going on. And, uh, you know, we mentioned lacrosse. So, uh you know, just lots of sports going on. There's no reason for you to, to sit at home. We've been va- If you've been vaccinated, and even if you haven't, put your mask on, go out and watch these kids, support these kids, even if you don't know them. You know, you, you can just drive by a school. I mean, I, I did that the other day and looked around. I pulled in the parking lot, and they had a little track meet going on. There so, you go. You know, if you want to get out of the house and support uh, local athletes, if you get out there and just uh, watch them run, watch them compete, because these kids deserve it, especially after they had it stolen. Uh, from them last year by the coronavirus. Absolutely. So we also want to mention again, we mentioned this last week, and we'll continue to mention it in the Monday edition, the digital edition. So you have to be a subscriber. Rick, you got to be a subscriber yeah. to get the digital iPad edition. You, the, the, the spring sports that we're putting in our Monday edition that's got all the prep track leaders, it's got all the baseball and softball leaders, Rick's Takes care of the soccer with his conference standings in there. It's Henry. I don't know. So, just doing, just trying to do the math, the quick math here. So, thirty-five of the top baseball players 
Mm-hmm. 35 top softball players, so that's 35 and 35. That's 70. Mm-hmm. That's just the baseball and softball. That's right. So track is a top? Top eight. Eight in each event right. times two. Times t- how many events in a 10? 18. 18. So eight times 18. How much is that, Rick? Okay, I'll answer it for you. It's a lot. <laughs> 144. 144. <laughs> add that to the 70. That's over 200 names of athletes in our Sunday, Monday, Monday edition, digital edition of the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Plus, we have a full page of, of team reports of soccer, softball, and baseball with beautiful photos by our photo staff at the NWA Democrat Gazette. What more could you want? Be a subscriber, support your kids, and and see what's going on. Because let me tell you, it there is a lot going on, a lot going on. And uh, so that'll wrap it up for today's show. We'll be back with you next week to talk more spring sports. Rick will bring us a little recap of that great soccer match that will be played tonight. We'll have some more games to talk about next week. Also, don't forget that we have Prep Rally video that airs each week in which we also talk about this and get interviews and player interviews. If you don't watch anything else, you need to watch the show this week. You want to see a smile that stretches from home plate all the way down the right field line. Madison uh, Hindley from Rogers, after she beat Bentonville for the first time, I think it's three days later, her smile's still on her face after that. <laughs> so uh, just just a uh, great game. So that'll, that'll be it for this week's edition. We will catch you next time. For uh, This is Chip Sousa for Henry Apple and Rick Byers. Thanks for being with us. Prep Rally, the podcast. Come back and join the us next Rally week. The podcast is produced and directed by the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Find us on SoundCloud, Apple, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher.